The Romans Part 2. More fun Doctor Who after Pompeii. There's also Chelmsford 1, 2, 3. That was a bit later. That one was in Roman Britain, <laughs> specifically actually, not Rome itself. I think what I like about this serial is it's very well realised. The design or the art direction is terrific. It's... You really get the characters, especially um, Ian and Barbara, relishing in being in the past in a time period where they don't have to worry about getting killed, like in the Aztecs or in the Reign of Terror. We have, so there just is that kind of great, uh, kind of, <laughs> these privileged time travellers sort of narrative. The Doctor's having a lot of fun, William Hartnell's allowed to shine. It's almost as though he's directing his own performance in a respect. A bit like how um, John Pertwee was told in the, the third Doctor to just be John Pertwee. It reminds me of a prototype for that. And I also, I think Vicky is serves as quite a strong, uh, assertive, as uh, something of a well. I was going to say a foil to, but it's a, not a foil to Susan. It, 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 in by contrast, to Susan, she serves as a foil to the Doctor, a really pleasant foil to the Doctor. Not he's not like you know, it's not like he's constantly concerned about, you know, his granddaughter will turn you know about how he's going to raise her. It, it's more of a you know, he's just having fun with this this young person. You know, this is just. You know, just bouncing off each other with fun chemistry. It's good stuff. Hartnell and O'Brien work well together here. Speaking of actors, let's read out about the casting and characters of this episode. It, it says here, as I had suspected, William Hartnell felt at ease with the Romans as it allowed him to perform some comedy. It similarly became a favourite for William Russell. The serial's guest cast was announced in a publicity document issued on the 27th of November 1964. Derek Francis, who played Nero, was a friend of Jacqueline Hill and her husband, Alvin Rakoff. He had been promised a role in Doctor Who since it started. I had to pause there because I had to wonder where I knew the name Alvin Rakoff from. Uh, there's some films in the 60s and 70s from the UK which he, he directed. I don't think I've seen any of them though. I know of Hoffman, The Comedy Man. Okay, there you go. Spoon had envisioned a different actor for Nero. Barry had also considered Paul Whitson Jones, George A. Cooper and Dick Emery. Edward Kelsey, who portrayed the slave buyer, was a long-term friend of Barry's as the two had entered the television industry at the same time. Two guest actors had previously appeared in the show as extras. Tony Lambden, who portrayed the court messenger. He was previously an extra in The Keys of Marinus, and Brian Proudfoot, who played Tigellinus, Tigellinus, had previously acted as Hartnell's double for location filming in The Reign of Terror. The guest cast received their scripts on the 30th of November and the 14th of December. This serial is notable for its portrayal of Nero. Nero is one of the most infamous maybe other than Caligula, the most infamous of the Roman emperors. Part of the reason is, is that there's this... An early Christian writer, Tertullian, would claim that Nero was the first to persecute Christianity on a widespread scale. Even Tacitus, a Roman historian who was not a Christian, would write about Nero's intense persecution of Christians after the Great Fire of Rome, which he may or may not have caused, but some historians suspect that he did. Actually, it's during Nero's persecution of Christians wherein many historians suspect that uh, Peter and Paul, the apostles, were martyred. Some modern scholars even suspect that the reason that the beast is marked with the name 666 in the book of Revelation is that 666 was a kind of code word to refer to Nero without persecution. I don't... there's a they claim, you know, due to, you know, Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet corresponding with, you know, numerals. Yeah, Nero Caesar in the Hebrew alphabet is N-R-O-N-Q-S-R, which, when interpreted numerically, represents the numbers 50, 200, 650, 160, 200, which add up to 666. This has been disputed by some. It sounds unusual to me, but... Hey, I'm open-minded. I mean, I can't say I know all that much about converting letters into numbers. I mean, converting numbers into letters, I mean, you know, I, you know, I learned my algebra in my time, you know, I was okay at that, although you know, I'm more into films now than mathematics, as it were. Apparently there, there, there does appear to be reports and accounts of those who thought Nero would return and, you know, bring destruction to, you know, Christendom or, or Rome, whatever it might be at the time, whoever you, whatever your disposition may have been. And so when they were referring to this great beast um, coming in Revelation, you know, um, saying his number was 666 was kind of a way of saying, oh yeah, it's Nero, I guess. About getting in trouble for it, I don't know. 
have that in which to speak Nero's name out of fear of being persecuted or fear that speaking his name aloud was a kind of curse, you know. Yeah. In any case, the Romans is a very fun Doctor Who serial, and part two is a further demonstration of this. If you're so inclined, you are sped up visuals for the spoken voiceover retrospective. The Romans part three, AOD's classic Doctor Who retrospective. Thanks again, friend.